doubt. Dot, dot, dot. Get it out. Get it out. On today's vlog of the one and only Jamie Jones, I'm going to get out something off my chest. You know those things that drive you crazy that maybe don't drive others crazy or maybe it's a general thing that drive people crazy but I feel like as of lately, as of today, as of this week, I really started to notice things that just irk me. Things that you would call a pet peeve which I looked at what pet peeve meant and let me tell you. Siri told me pet, pet peeve or a pet hate which I've never heard, is a minor annoyance that an individual identifies as particularly annoying to himself or herself to a greater degree than others may find it. Hmm, that's kind of what I said or what I meant. I had to share, because it made me laugh, 10 pet peeves that drive me nuts. The first one actually happened today. You know when your daughter is deathly sick or so you think as a mom that anything they do they're sick or they're dying because that's what I felt like. Baby girl was so sick last night and maybe we have to take her to the ER. Well, I'm glad we waited because she slept a little bit, but you know, you take her into the doctor and, and they're fine. You're like, at least, I didn't want you coughing before, but at least cough out your lung here so they can actually do something. She was coughing up. I swear, she was coughing. I, I swear her nose was running like a faucet. So. Why all of a sudden when I take her to the doctor, she's fine. I don't know. The second pet peeve that I have is shopping carts. Always, always, no matter how many shopping carts there are that are amazing, I always get the one that has a squeaky wheel. I always has a one that stops midway during the aisle and almost crashes into people. Shopping carts. Here's the thing. Shopping carts are put in their spot for a reason. So what drives me absolutely nuts is when people Put the shopping carts in the parking spaces. Big sign that says, put carts here, here, the arrow, it should be flashing lights. But literally, Josh and I were driving, and we were pulling to the parking lot, where this lady is getting ready to leave. Her car is right next to the shopping cart area, where you put them back. And she takes her cart, and even looks to put it away and goes, meh, just parks it, parks it right there. And leaves. I literally was like, we have to tell her, we have to tell her that that's not okay. Anyways, that drives me crazy. Please just put your cart back where it belongs. That way it would have more parking spots. The third one. So, you know when you go to the bathroom? <laughs> you know when you go to the bathroom to a public place and you go in and I always use, well, I guess it depends if I'm in a rush, always use the toilet seat covers. You're like, ew, Jamie, that's gross, but you know it happens to you. And first of all, my pet peeve is when they're all out because you can't leave the stall. I'm not gonna ask the lady next, hey, can I have a toilet seat cover? I mean, that's awkward. I mean, maybe if I care enough, I would. But that's not the majority of the pet peeve. So the pet peeve is when you put it on and you sit, you do your business and you stand up, and it's not on the seat anymore, but it's on your butt. So first of all, that defeats the whole purpose of why you put it on there so you don't get nasty germs in yourself. But now you have to slowly, <laughs> you have to slowly peel it off your butt and put it into the toilet. Why? What's the point? More than often not, I'm like, forget it. I'm not, I'm not going through that hassle. Second of all, when you're in the bathroom and you're awkwardly washing your hands, trying to make conversation with the person next to you, and either one, they leave without washing their hands, which is, oh my gosh, so disgusting. But two, when they love to wash their hands and flick it, flick it, and they flick it on you, and you get the wetness of their hand flicks of their nasty germs. Even though they just clean their hands, I don't know what word they've been, and they just fly it all over you. And you're like, literally, it's like in my face. I think that, oh God, oh God, I need to wash my whole self. Number four, pet peeve. I don't know if it happens to you, but it happens to me more often than it doesn't, which is sad. But when you wave to somebody and they see you and they don't wave back or they don't see you and the person behind them is like, are you waving at me or it's so awkward. And you're like, hey, so-and-so, and I guess nobody really waves anymore. Maybe I shouldn't wave or no one really shakes hands anymore. I'm just like, oh, hey, I was just waving to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Dance moves. People already know I just dance when it's awkward, <laughs> like right now. Wave it off. 
shake it off, shake it off. So that also goes into number five. When you go into a store and you see somebody you know, but you don't really want to talk to, and you're kind of in a rush, but you want to maybe say hi, but you don't want to be rude, and but they know they're feeling that same thing too, and you say hi to them anyway, and they just keep going, you're like, hey, I'll just talk into the aisle. I'm just talking. You see that person, and you're walking, and you're like, okay, they're past behind me, you turn around the corner, and they're right there in front of you, and you're like, ah, hey, how you doing? We both ignored each other, but now we're here. Another pet peeve. When you think you filmed your whole video, all to realize when you plug it in that night that the last five ones, well, those didn't record. So technology, that can either be a huge pet peeve, which sometimes it is, when it doesn't work for you. Well, at least I've had a shower. Number six, traffic. I know Redding, California has barely any traffic to even worry about. When you're stopped at a stop sign and there's traffic going both ways and you need to go into the further lane to get over the other side and there's traffic coming this way and this way. So this happened to me the other day in both ways and it's just traffic and it's just, you know, it's five o'clock traffic so I'm just gonna wait there for a while and I don't take as, mu as much risks anymore because I have a baby girl in the back seat and that's fine. I drive like a grandma. It's okay. So the traffic's coming this way, right? I'm here. Traffic's coming this way, traffic's coming the opposite way. So I'm just like, well, the person, one person on this side is stopping, making a way for me to go across the way. Oh, that's so nice. However, they don't see, they should see, that there's so much traffic coming this way. So they're waving me on like, come on, I'm letting you in. Like, I'm gonna be a nice person, letting you in. And I'm like, sorry, I, I can't. Do you see the trap? I'm trying to point traffic, cars, crash. So the traffic's coming, and then the person gets so mad. They're like, ugh, fine, because I don't go. But you know what, person? I'm not risking my life because you're trying to be nice. Thank you for the gesture. But pet peeve, please don't wave me on if you don't look at the other way in traffic first. Thank you for looking out for my life. Number seven, short jokes. I know. I am short. I know that I'm fun-sized. I know that I'm itty-bitty and, oh, you're so cute. I just want to put you in my pocket. Please don't tell me that. I make fun of myself being short, yes, but it doesn't mean that you can. My husband, if you know him or not, he is, I don't know, a, a normal six foot eight, a standard door size to be exact. I'm five foot three on a good day with this poof. It gives me an extra, you know, inch. So standing next to a, my very tall husband, I may look shorter to the normal person. A lot that comes out of a small package. I'm fine sized. Get used to it, but don't make fun of it. Number eight. I know that I look 15, but doesn't mean you need to tell me that. Some say, oh, what a blessing that you're gonna love that later on, but right now, it's not so fun. Let me tell you why. When we went to Seattle, all of us girls went to a Zumba class like some of you saw on my last vlog and you have to sign a waiver, you know, so that you don't die or something and you had to give them your ID. So the lady's taking our IDs, taking our papers that we're signing and she's looking at them and doesn't clearly, obviously, look at the date of when I was born because she's looking at them and kind of looking at us and like, oh, you girls look like the age of my daughter. So me being nice, thinking, hmm, this lady looks closer to my age but I wouldn't tell her that she looks young because I wouldn't be mean. Me being nice, no way you have a 26 year old. She says, oh, no, my daughter's, my daughter's 16. Oh, well, thank you for telling me I look 16. And I know it's great to look young, but sometimes it's frustrating. No shame, nine. <laughs> the little hand, finger won't go down, nine. Pet peeve number nine, Facebook messaging and text messaging. Something of this generation that makes us more in communication with one another, when really, I think they're really out to make us more frustrated with one another. And when you're texting somebody, hey so-and-so, you wanna go get some coffee tomorrow? Or hey, I have to tell you something serious and I don't wanna tell you the phone because I can't talk to you in person about it, but I'm gonna write it here and it's a novel, okay? Sent and you send, and you see the little bubble, I can't show you now, but you see the little bubble, the dot dots that they're writing you back, and you're like, oh, okay, they're gonna respond. They have the little bubble stopped, and then they don't respond, and then it's been a couple days, and then you see that they read it, 
and they haven't responded. Which, confession, as a mama, sometimes I see people's texts and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna text back, and then Adara's chewing on a pen. So, like, I know what it's like to not get back, but I don't know why, it just drives me crazy. Then Facebook messaging. Thank you, Facebook, for telling me that the person read it at 2.41 p.m. and hasn't responded. What I can learn from that pet peeve is just relax. And last, but not least, number 10. 10 pet peeve out of the many I have, but 10 requested advice. You know, being a mom, and even being pregnant, and even getting ready to be married, people love to tell you, and when people like to tell you some advice that you necessarily didn't ask for, like you're just simply saying something like, hey, I didn't wash my hair today. And they said, oh, well you should try this product and this product and this product. And you said, I was just telling you my hair wasn't washed. Do you know those kind of people? People just want to connect and, and share something with you. But sometimes it's better for us just to listen than to talk. And again, I can learn from that pet peeve to listen more and talk less. Today's was kind of fun. It was kind of silly, but when in doubt, let's real talk it out. Let's real talk the things that drive you crazy. When in doubt, signing out. Definition, let's see. Uh, uh, there's a kitties on these pages, that's not. Siri, define pet peeve. Particularly, particularly, to a greater degree than others may def to a greater degree than others may define it. <sighs> to swear, I swear her nose was literally running buckets. Buckets? I let her faucet. <laughs> buckets? <laughs> Oh, oh, another one. Another one that's not listed on there, that's 11-ish, but I'll just add on there. When people sneeze or cough, even if they cover their mouth, I'm like, oh, blizzard! And I literally, like, if I have a scarf on, I'm like, because oh. you know, like, that snot can, like, it can go, like, as fast as 30 miles per hour or something like that. That actually might be a lie. I don't even know.